so the first finishing pass on this section is done and it looks really good you know good enough as long as it's smooth it looks really good and the tool's still there and also I bumped up the feed rate from 30 inches a minute to 45 with the manual override so cut down the cycle time an hour an hour and about 10 minutes so I'm gonna do that I got to run the same tool path on this section right now and a couple hours later we have the cavity work done on this thing you can see everything's nice and smooth in there it's kind of hard to film this type of thing um, this center sprue is done and the last thing I got to do is I just wrote a little program or a tool path there it takes 10 minutes to come in here clean that up could make it faster but once again I'd rather just get it done to, you know not speed through this thing but let's see if I can zoom you in so there's the cavity it looks rough but honestly it looks really good I did a 16th inch ball 1000 step down and step over so I gotta do this and then this side of this mold is done all right so I just finished up that center section there that's all done I marked left, right, top, bottom, just in case. So now I'm gonna go to flip it. And then I've got to face off that side, add in this little radius and drill and tap some half 13 um, holes there. And those are 140 millimeters apart. So 70 millimeters off center for that. And uh, this will be done. All right, so this is 100 thou depth of cut, 300 inches a minute, one and a half inches step over and it goes pretty hard watch the load meter whoa <laughs> it's cooking now hey got to take that aluminum off somehow right this is awesome Big chips, just peppering the glass. Then we got a, oh no, still got a couple more passes here. There's a finished pass at 100 inches a minute. This has to be the finished pass here. Oh, maybe not. All right, well, I'll come back when we're doing something else. All right, this is not a fun thing to tell you guys. This is not something I like to do. And yes, my hair is crazy, but I had a little bump on my machine. This is the tool changer pocket. You're not supposed to hold this. You can see the casting there cracked. Um, I have a drill truck stuck in here. Um, basically what happened was I need to drill and tap some half 13 holes in the back of this mold and I've showed you guys that I had a drill sticking out here the max gauge length on a DM2 is seven inches I can see from here it was seven and a half and it's funny because I I knew I should have checked that and I didn't so always 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 check and basically what happened when this went to tool chains to another tool the carousel went up like this and the tool the drill that was out here hit part of the inside of the enclosure. I'll show you that. And this just snapped off and fell down on the chips. Now there is a drilled hole there and this looks like it just sheared off. I don't know if that's why that drilled hole was there, but this is hard to show you guys because one, it's a stupid mistake. I'm showing you my broken machine now. It's not broken. I'm still running. I just got to be careful that a tool changer or a tool change doesn't change a tool into this empty pocket and just drop that tool because there's nothing there. Um, but let me show you what happened. All right, so I was standing here. Oh, I need to watch that. That's the same thing I just did. Hold on. Let's not do that again. Holy cow. Okay, that's tool one, tool one, ATC forward. Okay, I need to be careful about that. So exactly what happened. This tool was over here, it went to tool change, it swung up and it actually hit right there. You can see those chips, it hit that and then it just fell into those chips. So luckily, if you look, 
It's just a simple bracket, and this whole thing is sold as an assembly, actually. And if I go over here, it's only 55 bucks. So, cheap lesson, right? And just a stupid mistake. So, luckily I can still run my machine. It's not like it broke the tool changer or anything. So, I'm grateful of that, but just a dumb mistake. So, like, for example, that tool right there, that I think is, well, I bet you it's the same because that's the same drill I pulled out. Same drill chuck. Yeah, so that's seven and a half. So I need to take this tool out right now before I forget and repeat my mistake. So I'm gonna have to manually have it, or I'll have it do the tool change. I'll have to stop the spindle, come in here, put the tool in manually. So note to self, I need to get some stubbier way of holding drills. That's really what I need. So I don't know. It's uh, not fun, but I'm continually continuing work on the mold because I have to. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, a couple things I'm working on. We are reaming holes and there's a lot to talk about. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you guys. Okay, so before I start my next cavity block, I wanted to dial in some reamers. I'm working with a quarter inch and an eighth inch. So quarter inch I've done before, but I found something out that was very interesting to me and I guess I will share it to you guys. So these are quarter inch ejector pins that I bought from, these ones were from MSC. And then I also bought, if we go over here, these are from McMaster, okay? So they're both advertised as quarter inch. I'd have to check the website. I know they both call out specs, but if I mic this one, see if I can do this one handed. open this up I don't think I'll be able to do this one uh, maybe if I stand it up so there we go five tenths over quarter inch okay so I'd used these pins before in another mold and I reamed to two five one that gives you two and a half tenths of clearance on both sides of the pin, so radially, and it worked perfect, okay? You measure this pin, this one's from McMaster. Oh, come on. And it's almost a thou under, seven tenths. So I had been using a 251 reamer and that made this one way too sloppy. So if we take this, this first hole here, you can see it's just way, too, and it's wiggly. You know, this, the up and down of it falling through, that's fine, but it's the side to side wiggle. You can visibly see that. So the next one I did, I don't have a 250 reamer. I have a 249. So I switched out the 251 reamer to 249 and I got this much less wiggle, almost no wiggle, still drops through. And I was playing with the speeds and feeds and I finally got, this one is the one I like, this third hole. So it still drops in pretty smoothly, almost no wiggle. This last one, I was just messing with the speeds and feeds. I don't like it as much. Um, so this, this one we're gonna go with. I think I changed the RPMs and the feed in and feed out. So that's fine. So luckily I can luck out with that, but it's these eighth inch ones that I'm struggling with now because these ones, I got a 126 reamer and I should have gotten a 125 reamer. So if we look, well, this one wasn't reamed all the way through. That one wasn't either. But this one, way too much wiggle. So talking with John to see if he can get me a 125 reamer. I think these were one, two, four, five diameter. So one, two, five would be great. Um, I don't think I could get away with my one, two, six reamer. That would, I think that would have plastic leak around the pins and I don't want that. So I'm really glad I'm doing this test before I move to that because that would suck to screw that up.
All right, so now we're doing some helix boring with a half inch tool, cleaning up some of these holes, a couple counter bores. I'll show you here. We are doing these holes here. I'll just show you the tool path right there. So I turned down the speeds. It's gonna take a while, but once again, I don't wanna screw this up and I don't wanna chip my $120 end mill. So I'm just gonna take it slow. We're already halfway done. So all those holes have been done. Now it's just these holes. Shout out to John, link to his channel below. He dropped off this reamer set. I have a eighth inch reamer there that is much closer to the size. I just reamed this hole here for this pin and it is a much better fit. There's almost, I mean, yes, there's always gonna be slop, but there's not much compared to this one. I don't know if you can see that. Look like at the bottom where my fingernail is down there. Look at the wiggle there, you can see it. So if you look right down there, you can see it move back and forth. Come over here, almost nothing. So I got one more hole here, might as well try something, but uh, I think we found a good solution here. Okay, so I just center drilled all the holes for the ejector pins, I just drilled 241 with this carbide drill. I love this thing, it's my go-to. Now we're gonna come back and we're gonna ream these five holes and then we'll come back and drill the eighth inch holes. So these quarter inch holes aren't through holes so I can't test the fit as well, but the fact that it does this and that there's not much slop left to right, just going through and checking these here. Those I think are gonna be perfect. So now let's come in and drill all these little eighth inch holes to I think 119 diameter, something like that. One thing about machining, it's all about order operations. For example, working on these pockets here for these bushings. So I've already got the head section done, you can see. I just added that counter bore 150 thou deep. So that's gonna start this so it's nice and square. And now I'm gonna come in here with a tool path once again and use wear to open that up to my exact number. Now this one's gonna be a little bit tricky, but I know I can do it, so we're gonna get it done. And uh, it's just all about order of operations as far as which tool paths to do first. You really gotta think about things, but as long as you think it out, sometimes I even write it down, you're good to go. All right, we're off to the races. I just finished. I'll show you this section of the cavity. roughed out similar to the first cavity and now we got ejector pins that are poked through just finished roughing this little sprue channel and now it's going to go to that quarter inch length of cut 16th inch bowl and uh, it's going to finish everything out well spoke too soon broke the tool um let's see let me move this forward pretty sure it broke right in here so good thing I have, I think two or three more of those. I might change up my strategy or I might just slow things down a little bit. Okay, so I figured I'd show you the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever that saying is. Basically the mold's working, but I keep breaking 16th end, end mills and I don't know why. I ran the first one just fine, didn't break an end mill and actually pushed it 50% faster and so with this mold, I don't know what's going on. I've broken two. They are very long end mills, 600 thou length of cut. And luckily I got through half of the cavity work and I can use my standard eighth inch length of cut 16th ball. And I'm just gonna use that to finish this thing out. And I'm just gonna take it slow. I just need this thing done. I got a couple more tool paths to do. I'm gonna add some like slots on the side and then chamfer that. Other than that, Fusion's being really slow on this laptop, so I'm having to run upstairs, take my USB, post like a tool pad, run down here, plug it in, let it go, because this, this is not working. So yeah, that's where I'm at. And my case in point here. This is not working. But, like I said, so this part of the cavity from here back is all good. It's this front section here and then like I said I'm adding some 
um, pry slots here just so I can get the mold open if I need to. But other than that, I mean, this is the new tool I'm going to be using. This is my standard tool list for mold work. Um, a lot stubbier than what we were using for, and there's the broken one there. So, hope for the best, I guess. So I noticed a little dimple on my part, and I rewound re the tool path, and you watch it. So this whole time, it hasn't been cutting. It's slowly going down, um, and all of a sudden, boom. It just decides to do that. And that's the exact dimple I saw, so... I have no idea why it was doing that. Um, that makes no sense why it did that. I guess the only thing I can think of is if I check my geometry. Oh, come on. Was that little section not selected? Aha. That's the problem. Okay, yeah, it's not even, my current selection's out here. It should be on this top edge. Okay, that's my problem. All right, so now I got concerned and I look, I'm looking back at the geometry I selected for the first mold half I already completed and most of it's okay. I just noticed this one's not. Um, and then some of it's just not to this outside edge. So... At this point, I have to finish the mold, so I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do. All right, it's currently midnight. Cycle just finished. This is three hours and 20 minutes. Tool's still there. Let's blow this thing off. And let's see what we got. So, it looks pretty good to me. I'll give you guys a close-up here in a second. All right, so I flipped the mold over. What I did was obviously decked it, chamfered it, and now I'm coming in and I'm drilling a bunch of clearance holes to mate with the ejector pin holes. So you can see these should go through. I'm not sure if it's because of the coolant or what, but you should be able to see through those. And I'll explain why I'm doing that here in a second, but I just drilled. These are 275 holes and they go halfway down for the quarter inch, and then these are 150 holes for the eighth inch, and then these two holes here are gonna be drilled and tapped to quarter 20, and I'll show you why those are being tapped as well here in a second, so more to come. All right, we got one mold side done. I'll pull this out and I'll show you guys a little bit closer look at it, but it looks pretty good. All right, so this is a finished mold side with ejector pins you're not in focus there you go and it's looking really good i'm really happy with the way this turned out um, i'll show you more features of it as it gets assembled but this is kind of the blank slate and then obviously the other side there so what i'm going to work on next is i've got three parts left back plate and two ejector plates and then we are done so i'm going to go ahead and work on those and then uh, I'll do some finishing work to this bad boy.